Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today on this episode of Dynamo BIM. Today we're going to take a step back in Dynamo. We're going to look back at data types, inputs, and outputs. So essentially how we deliver the information in Dynamo. This is exactly where I got stuck in Dynamo when I first got started, especially when we filter a list of elements like rooms by one of their values, like a room name. And then we have the room elements in addition to some room values that in this case might be strings like text, right? So how we can keep that list of rooms intact. Super important. Let's get started. Per usual, a sample file here, Revit 2022. I'm gonna open up Dynamo and we're gonna start to look at some of our rooms. Now in this case, once again, we're gonna maybe look at these rooms, give you look at spaces or areas in the same way, filter them based off of their parameter values, such as their room name. And maybe we wanna edit them. Maybe we wanna edit their room number based off some logical sequence. Maybe we want to place elements in that room. Whatever it might be, this is typically the intro, the very beginning of a lot of the scripts that we are gonna work with. So to start, what we're gonna do is we are going to use the categories dropdown. I'm gonna use this because I wanna be able to use different categories of Revit. Maybe I wanna filter different elements in different ways, right? Uh, when I do wanna hardwire this to only look at one category, I will typically use the category by name, which is something that you're probably familiar with. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and get the all elements of that category. And because I have this set to automatic over here, you can see that that's gonna run as I go, getting the 91 rooms in here. Now, this is super important. You can see that these are reporting elements. This output delivers the room, it's just the room, right? Not the room name or anything like that. It is a room and its element ID. We may be familiar with element IDs in Revit. Every element in Revit has an ID. It's basically just the API and its way of tracking each individual element within Revit. If I click on that green number there, you'll actually see that Revit will pop me over to where that number exists, that element ID exists. So if I select, for example, the vestibule, I go up to the manage tab and I go to IDs of selection, you can see 177056, that matches. That is that room right there. Revit is reporting that room. Element IDs are incredibly important to be able to track your elements through the Revit model. And because this element reports the element ID next to it, I know that it's output as an element itself. So now I can go ahead and I can start to ask things about this element, right? Like its name. And you can see this wants an element for its input and outputs a string. So when I come in here and I input those room elements, there you go, we get that vestibule name for the first room, because so we know that that's our vestibule, and so on and so forth for the 91 rooms that we have. And this is a string value. A node that I really like is object type. This actually allows you to understand um, what type of element that is, what it is that you're actually reporting out. So this is a Revit element room. This is a string value, right? Um, even a room number is a string because it can have letters in it, right? We could have 101A, 101B, right, etc. Um, the mark value also has 
values that are letters, so that would also be a string. So now if I want to start to filter based off of these elements, maybe I want to get only the electrical rooms from this list. I can ask them, do you equal, does the string equal a string of, right, go ahead and get rid of this object type since we know that those are strings, and does it equal, is, that, is case sensitive here, electrical. And I should get a list of booleans, which is a true or false, or zero, one, right, binary values, right? And you can see here that number five, index five within that list comes up as true, as does 14. If I go down the list and find another one like 20, that should also be true. So now I can start to filter this list. Now you can see I started to move down these elements here because I always want to filter back to this original list of elements. And that way I'm always maintaining the list of room elements. If I need to re-ask the, the elements based off of what their name is or whatever it might be, I'm going to do that again after I filter down to this list. If you filter down to the list of strings, which is totally possible, you can see that's what it's giving me is if I go back to my object type here, it's giving me the string data rather than the element data. So if I want to do something to these rooms, like update their room number, to include a suffix or maybe a prefix because they're an electrical room, right? I'm gonna need to filter back to the elements, right? So that I'm getting that original list of rooms. So now that I can do something with those rooms, right? So now I can say, I want to get the room number. So I'm gonna get the parameter by value name, so element by parameter name. Get these values number, I believe it's just number, not room number. We can double check that if we get a value that comes up as incorrect or blank. Now you can see we have our values for all of our electrical rooms. Maybe now we want to add an E to the beginning of those rooms, right? So that they are indicated based off their room number that they are an electrical room. I can then do an X. I guess I can do E plus X using a code block here. And now you can see there that I get E25, E18, E12, etc. And now I would like to set these values back to the room. So element dot set parameter by name. And you can see this wants the element. So once again, if I had filtered down to this list of strings, right first off I can't get the numbers right because the electrical string value doesn't have a number the room has a number in addition I won't be able to set these to my elements right I always want to keep my list of filtered values so once again filtering to the list of elements rather than the element values themselves there are time we might need to filter down to element values, maybe for sorting and grouping or other things. But for most cases, this is usually how I attack it. I want to maintain a list of elements. So I'm going to get those elements, filter them down, get a new list of elements, right? You can see here that I only have now nine, zero through eight, nine electrical rooms that I get their uh, room numbers. 
And now we can add or append whatever I need to do to modify that value and set that back to my number value. Now this is a great point in the process for me to go ahead and turn this to manual rather than automatic. Anytime that we're updating something in Revit, any type of Revit elements that are going to be updated, modified, deleted, created, anything like that, anytime the Revit model is actually going to be interfaced with for an update, we should definitely switch this over to manual. So now that I've done that, I can go ahead and reuse the number input there from my parameter name and wire the value over to the element to set the new number values. All of my electrical rooms, which one is right here, should have an E in front of that value. So we run this. There we go. All of those rooms, nine of them, now have the elements. And you can see once I set the parameter value by the name, it also reports out those elements and their element IDs. Thanks again for tuning in today. I hope that makes working with Dynamo inputs and outputs a little easier, filtering your Revit elements down within Dynamo and getting those into a consistent list. Don't forget also by hovering over the inputs on a node, you can typically see what that node expects in terms of its inputs. So definitely a wonderful way for you to understand what Dynamo wants. Thanks so much and let me know any questions or advice you have down in the comments.